Hi, welcome to the next video in the Spotlight series, looking at the gamma distribution this time. The gamma distribution is quite similar to the log normal distribution in that it always takes a value greater than zero, which again makes it good for things like costs. It takes two parameters, but there's two different ways that you can describe it. You can describe it with a shape and a scale or a shape and a rate. And there's a little warning triangle here because Excel muddles these up. Uh, we'll come to that later. You can see on the right that you can get quite different looking probability density functions depending on how you set those parameters. One of the nice things about the gamma distribution is that it's very easy to make a gamma distribution with a particular mean and a particular coefficient of variation. So the coefficient of variation is the standard deviation divided by the expected value. Um, and if we let that be C, then we can use a gamma distribution where K is C to the power of minus two, so one over C squared, and theta is C squared times that mean X bar that we wanted. So this is very simple. Um, and it's quite common, though not best practice, to have in a model something like a cost parameter and decide that its standard deviation in the PSA should be 10% or 20% of the mean. So to take an example where we have a cost of $6,000 and a standard deviation of 10%, we would calculate K to be equal to 100, like so, and we would calculate theta to be equal to 60. And you should be able to check that you've got the right distribution. If you multiply k and theta, you should get back the mean that you were aiming to have. So 100 times 60, 6,000. Now, the gamma distribution in Excel uses the shape and scale parameterization, so the k and theta. But for some reason, it calls the parameters alpha and beta. There's nothing that you can do about it. Um, you just have to remember that in Excel you want the shape and the scale and that's the order you're going to supply them in. So, so long as you just stick with shape and scale, you'll be fine. And we've got this gamma.inv, pass it a random number between 0 and 1, and then your shape and then your scale. Um, and if you want the uh, deterministic value to be the mean from that distribution, then it's just the shape times the scale, that k theta that we saw on a previous slide. R naturally prefers to use the shape and rate. So if you don't name the parameters that you're passing to the function, it will assume that you're providing a shape and a rate. But it works perfectly fine if you tell it that you're going to give it the scale. So here we've got R gamma. 5 because we want it to give us 5 random numbers um, and our shape parameter is 100 and our scale is 60. If you want to know what rate you should supply it's just 1 divided by the scale so 1 divided by 60. These two are giving you uh, samples from exactly the same distribution. Enjoy!